Alright, so this is actually the second time I'm filming this video. The first time, it was way too dark. Uh, I decided not to turn on some of the lights, and it got dark. And I know, George, you don't like it dark. So, that being said, I know it's been a while. I missed last week uh, doing a video. Uh, I was working on the review, but I came down with allergies or a cold or something since currently the weather here in the Northeast uh, is something like schizophrenic one day is 87 the next day it's in the 50s so everybody was getting sick um, I was hoarse coughing the drainage it was just it was bad I'm, I, I couldn't do a video like that so I figured I'd take some time to recover and now here we are later in the week um, actually I'm filming this oh it's like 7 30 at night on a Sunday uh, I worked all day teaching, had a great class, and decided that now that I have actual f a free moment, I would come and talk about this amazing gun. This, and everyone's looking at it, and they think they know what it is, but you don't. This is a model CC660 from coast to coast. It is a 12 gauge shotgun, it is a master mag. On the barrel, it is labeled for a police riot shotgun. All right, so it's a 12 gauge pump action, which is great. Um, it is actually uh, one and only shotgun that I have. Um, what makes this one a little different is obviously the mag tube itself is almost the entire length of the barrel. It is not designed for foul hunting or skeet shooting. It is something you would see the police department have in their squad cars in like the early 70s i mean i remember seeing shotguns like this when i was a kid on like chips um tj hooker i don't know i'm aging myself but it's a coast to coast shotgun more importantly it's a mossberg 500 so yes i said it's a coast to coast it is their branded version so these were made by Mossberg here in the United States, and then they were stamped and branded for Coast to Coast, which if you guys don't know, because I didn't even know what Coast to Coast was. Coast to Coast was a hardware store back like Midwest area, but in the like 60s and uh, early 70s. Um, in fact, they were still around in the 90s and they were bought out by True Value. Um, not getting too in depth on coast to coast and the stores and all that, but they did try. They're like little mom and pop, you know, uh, hardware stores that I was used to when I grew up. They did try to branch out into larger, uh, like a big box store, kind of like what we have today with Lowe's and Home Depot. And well, just didn't pan out, just didn't take off. So True Value ended up buying them and they went the way of history. However, some of their firearms uh, are still left over. Um, they are not worth a lot. In fact, they are um, only a few hundred dollars. Now, nothing wrong with that. I'm into cheap guns that are good quality because it is a Mossberg at heart. Even though it doesn't have the Mossberg name on it, it is a Mossberg 500. It breaks down the same way. It operates the same way. Hell, it's the same shotgun. That being said, this one um, has no choke in it and has no way to put a choke in it. So if you were gonna use something like this with birdshot, good luck. It's going everywhere. There is no way to control the spread of the birdshot that you could with like a choke. That being said, it is a great gun for double up, double up buck and slugs. All right, so this is a great shotgun for say home defense. Uh, now, everyone that knows me personally knows that shotguns for me are tertiary. It is like the bottom of my list. It is like one of the last items that I'm going to go for when it comes to home defense. Just because it's 12 gauge and, well, listen, double up buck, slugs, which is designed for, that's penetrating a lot. I'd prefer, <coughs> so, sorry, I would prefer 
something to um, a pistol at that point, or the best for me would be a carbine with some frangible ammo. Because remember, guns are going to do one of three things. They're either going to poke a hole in you, poke a hole through you, or they're going to do what this one does. It's going to remove a chunk of you. Okay, my wife is very OCD in cleanliness. Last she wants is a chunk of the bad guy floating about the house. And I am way too lazy to clean up that kind of mess. So, that being said, it's on the list for home defense, but bottom of my list to each their own. Some people want to go straight for it, but me personally, these things, they kick a little too much, especially when you're moving into that double up buck and that that slug area for having torn labrums uh yeah yeah 12 gauge is not a very pleasant experience for me i'll do it but not going out of my way to do it in fact we have some video right here of me shooting i'll play that for you right now all right so we're down at the range i've got that coast to coast i have loaded uh, first up is going to be two buckshot. Yeah, remember, there's no choke in this, so it's going to be bad. Uh, so two birdshot, two buckshot, and then two slugs. Because, well, it's a police riot, and it's designed for buckshot and slugs. So I'm right around 10-yard line. We've got a target. It's already got a bunch of holes in it from 357 and 38 Special. But from this distance, I'm going to shoot at the... Uh, Homeland Security target, and uh, then we'll take a walk down and take a look at it, and then we'll go back to uh, talking more about this gun. All right, here we go. All right, so two bird shot, two buck shot. Out of the slugs, and I'm telling you right now, I hate shotguns. I have a torn labrum. This sucks. Luckily, I just got cortisone a couple of days ago. Shh, don't tell the doctor I'm doing this. He told me to stay away from shotguns. All right, slugs, here we go. Next slug. down it's empty all right like I said there's no choke in this so bird shot is all over the place all right so you can see the bird shot clearly off the target it's all over the place this is only at 10 yards uh, double up buck is definitely spread out all right here uh, there's a slug and I don't know if that's the wad. I think a slug hit up here. Uh, point is, the gun is not designed for birdshot. So I don't use birdshot. Um, well, Mossberg 500 with no choke in it. That's not what it's designed for. It's not a hunting gun. Uh, that being said, for me, remember, this is tertiary. So, pistol to get to a carbine. Pistol is back up to the carbine. If it goes down, I use that. Worst case scenario, shotgun. But I'm telling you, double up bucket, three yards. Makes a mess. Get slugs at three yards. Or your self-defense distance, like in your home. Uh, listen, you're going to over-penetrate. You're going to definitely hit the bad guy. And it's going to blow through your wall and a bunch of other stuff. So, I always recommend, don't. Don't use a shotgun for home defense. Not unless you don't, you know, not unless you don't like your neighbors and you don't like your house, so there's always that. I don't know. Alright. Normally I do more shooting, but listen. This thing's kicking my butt. Alright, my shoulder is 
on fire. So let's cut back to the office. That's it. We're just doing six rounds today. All right. Uh, it's great. I beat up my shoulder just for you guys. Luckily, I was only a few days out from cortisone injections. Uh, but there's really not much to talk about. It's a Mossberg. It's a it's a regular shotgun. There's nothing extraordinary about it. It's it's your run of the mill shotgun. Everyone understands it. Um, the uh, surprisingly the action the barrel uh, everything on this when I first got it uh, it had been not cleaned for a while so I broke it all down cleaned it all up actually used a, uh, a Mossberg 500 video on how to do it so thank God I could find that and then I am lucky enough to be able to meet with Mossberg engineers uh, just because for me, Mossberg's a local company. It's literally right up the road. And when Mossberg is doing R&D, uh, they're utilizing where I work for a range. So I get spoiled and every now and then when they show up to do some R&D stuff. I'm not saying that I get to, but I might be able to shoot next to your shotguns. Um, I didn't this here, obviously, because my shoulders are shot and not a big fan of it. But... When it comes to like their MC1, MC2, as soon as they uh, they get something like that, we get to look at it, we get to play with it, and it's it's pretty cool. The perks of the job, all right. So with this, I'm just going to show you guys quickly how it works. Um, I have some snap caps. Um, so for me, when I load this, I usually drop one in the chamber, lock it forward, flip it over put one in, shove it in the tube. All right now the tube is big enough to hold five, which means I can hold five plus one. Not too bad. Um, in Connecticut, you are limited to pretty much how many of these you can hold if it's for hunting. This is not for hunting, it is straight up home defense. Now, if I were gonna set it up for home defense, the chamber is gonna be empty. We're gonna close it and it's now locked and then we're just gonna fill the mag tube just like that and this is how you would store it for home defense nothing in there then you hear something go bump in the night and the first thing you're gonna do is trust me anybody hears that they're probably running for the hills all right trying not to shoot these across the room which the first time I recorded this I ended up doing all right it has got a standard safety right here okay push it forward you get red obviously red is dead and then there's the safety on uh, some more modern shotguns the safeties are gonna be down here though every now and then there's still a few here um, now for ghosting the, sh the trigger on it <coughs> I am definitely putting a snap cap in so we can test that trigger. All right, so we know that it's a snap cap. Safety is off. There's a little squishiness. So there's a wall and then a nice clean break. It can't be more than three to four pounds. All right, safety goes on. Do it again. All right. Squishy, squishy, squishy. Nice clean break. Not bad at all. And I just lost my snap cap. Overall, it is not a bad shotgun. If you can find one uh, in your local gun store, obviously it's going to be used. Um, looking online, doing a little research, these were running for like 200 bucks on like guns international or gun broker things like that uh there's nothing wrong with coast to coast again it's a mossberg just stamped with a different name so if you're in the market for a nice home defense shotgun um and you're not too worried about pistol grips and things like that then take a look for the coast to coast all right again this is the cc 660 uh it's pretty much what i'm used to when it comes to shotguns Military has Mossberg 500s. Sometimes you can get like a Benelli or something like that. Most of the time, 
you are just getting a regular Mossberg pump action shotgun um, and it's good for like I said home defense uh, it's utilized for breaching it's utilized for a lot of things you probably could use it since it's a slug you could utilize it hunting though I know some people would prefer a semi-automatic uh, me personally I do love that nostalgic noise or uh, the sound of the racking of the uh, pump uh, I do like it so all right, that's about it. I know it's a quick video. We're not going like tip to butt like some other channels do. Um, you, Everyone understands how the shotgun works. If you guys need something more in depth, let me know. I can go over a full breakdown, things like that. Um, I just thought it was cool. It, it's a coast to coast. I never heard of the brand. And turns out it happens to be a Mossberg. So stoked because I kind of like Mossberg. I, don't, um, I think they're really good shotguns. So. All right, that's all I got for you guys tonight. You guys have a great night, and I will talk to you later. Hit up the comments. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. You're going to find links floating around somewhere for locals and Patreon. I uh, you know it feels like I'm a shill, but ammunition and purchasing new and cool items and gear to review does get expensive. And... I'm not trying to sell it to to the wife and be like, oh, we need to do this for the YouTube video. It'll just come from patrons like you. And then once we accumulate enough funds, I'll put up a vote. What should I get? So not only am I picking something, you guys will have some sort of say in it. So if you feel uh, generous, please go to Patreon. Go to Locals. Support the channel. At the very least, like, share, comment, subscribe. Let your friends know about it. Hook a brother up. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.